G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineers Survival. And today, as promised, we're going to build what is hopefully a more effective vanilla welder. Since the vanilla small grid welders really don't do much at all. And right now, I'm going to do a little upgrade to this map. Now we have a little red castle symbol. I think that looks far better matched with our little house. So let's head downstairs where we will build this new welder. The first one I want to build is using vector thrust and using rotors to convert from small grid to large grid. And I've already decided on the name of it because I think it fits fairly well with one of the names I was suggested for the other welder basically given the shape that I suspect it's going to end up having after I've built it. Okay, so for this one, we're actually going to start our construction a little bit differently. The welder is going to start pointing directly upward, and that's going to facilitate our placement of the conversion between the large grid and the small. So we'll start with a medium cargo container, and I could put just a conveyor tube in here, but I figure since I'm going to have this space, I will use the cargo container. The reason I say I could use a just a conveyor there is that the large grid welder has a massive capacity. It has a capacity as large as a small cargo container on a large grid, which happens to also be the same size as a small grid large cargo container. So we're not really going to need the storage space from the small grid medium cargo container. It's not really going to have any great impact on us. Now, let's drop this, which is our large grid advanced rotor part. Let's drop it on top. Hopefully I've lined it up right, or right enough. Excellent. Now we'll weld up our rotor and our cargo container so that we can attach this rotor part to our little construction here. Okay, so now that it's built, we can go advanced rotor and we can click attach. Now unfortunately, unlike the large grid well, uh, rotor, you can't just do an easy add small rotor head to it. With the small grid ones, you have to do it this manual connection method to get them to convert. Now, I'm also going to Set our lower limit to zero. And I'm going to set our velocity to minus one so that this will realign itself if it can. Oh, it has no power, of course it can't. Oops, oh well. Let's whack a welder on top. Not like that at all. Let's not add a welder like that. Let's add it like this. And I was very, very close to the ceiling there. I can't believe how close I got that. Oh boy. Alright, so now that we've got the welder finished, we can actually see here, it's got 46,875 litres of volume, which is a lot more than the medium cargo container. So this ship, just because of the welder, is actually going to have more storage space than our little nugget over here, which is kind of cool. It's going to be a lot bigger than the nugget, as you can already see, it's kind of going to be bigger than the nugget but it's going to be about as small as I could come up with a design for this particular idea. And I think I'm going to be reasonably happy with what we're coming out with. So what I want to do now is add a little conveyor frame here. I'm thinking I'm going to need a little extra space behind this as once I add a cockpit on here, we will be fairly limited with what room we've got left. So I'll add a cockpit there. We're going to add a conveyor curve here. Then I got a connector. Oh yes, I do. Got a connector on there. So this is going to attach to the ceiling. Underneath it, we are going to have our batteries. So why won't you let me place that? Oh right. Okay, let's do a little something here so that we can get rid of our side attachment so I can place the batteries in. So 
So if we then place our batteries, one there. Do I want to place one there with a gap in between or do I want to leave a gap at the back? Hmm. Might leave the gap at the back. We'll see how that looks once we get further into the build. Next up, we want two rotors, one here and one here. And these are going to have... Wah! Ah, I hate it when it does that. Ugh. These are going to have large atmospheric thrusters attached to them on both sides. There we go. So that's two of our lifting thrusters. And now the battery is reconnecting that. I can actually grind off this from the back. And we're going to have another rotor here with a another large atmospheric thruster. So we'll have three large atmospheric thrusters. That, combined with the vector thrust script, should give us enough lift in almost all orientations and a fairly stable platform to do the welding from, which is kind of cool. Now, what we need also on this is a gyroscope, possibly two. Can't place it like that, but I should be able to place it there. Then in there we'll also place our little programmable block for the vector thrust script. And I think I'll also place a pair, place another gyroscope under here. So that'll be two gyroscopes. As when this thing is full of steel plates, we're going to need a fair bit of force to move this ship around. That should be most of what we need for this ship, I think. What am I missing? We could add an antenna, we could, no I think that's a, that's most of it. So I'm going to get to welding all of this up now and it might take me a little while since we're going to need more motors for these three large atmospheric thrusters. And then I've already got a paint job in mind for this, which I think will look pretty cool. And welding complete. Let's hop in the cockpit and set a few things up. Let's grab that. Is that the first rotor? No, that's the advanced rotor. Its current angle is zero. Perfect. That's what I want. Share an tensor and block. I don't know if I need to do both, but I'm doing both. And I want to make these three rotors have maximum displacement. Not that it makes a big difference. You're still going to see sparks. And our programmable block is going to need to get the vector thrust script. So we've got our vector thrust 2, okay. Change the thing that I personally like because I never want it to behave differently. I don't actually need to have a switch for it. Then I need to have a... What is going on? Run, confirm. Run, percent, stand, by. Uh, what the? Okay. That's what was happening. Um, suspect it doesn't like the fact that we are currently attached to the ground by a non, by an incomplete, <laughs> by an incomplete thingy on the, uh, landing gear. Landing gear, that's the word I was looking for. And we want weapons and tools, and we want toggle on off, and... What else I want to do is set up a sensor like we did before so that I hopefully won't die. Except this time, since it's just me in this world, what I really need is this sensor to pick up whenever I get out of the cockpit. So no matter which way I end up outside the cockpit, I want it to switch off these welders. And that means I need to have the sensor range around the cockpit. If you're playing in multiplayer, you may want to have it extend out to where the weld tips are, but if the sensor means that every time I exit the cockpit these are off, I'll never be able to be killed by them. So that's fine. If 
for what I'm doing, which means I'll need a smaller sensor range, which is handy. So we'll need a bunch of parts for that though. Okay, that's our sensor complete. Let's do our usual trick. Show sensors field range, right click on this, and we will have show on HUD. And with that sort of range, it would definitely work. Every time I exit, we'll be fine. But what I'd like to do is gradually reduce this to see if we can just get it around the cockpit. So front extent will be probably only need two meters. Back extent, let's do two, let's do three. Top extent, we'll do three. Bottom extent, we'll do one. Right extent, we'll do two. And left extent, we'll do two. So what I want to find out is if I hop in and every time I exit, do I activate it? Yep, looks like no matter which way I enter... Oh, what if I do this? No, if I enter from too far away, it will not work. So I want to make sure I'm inside it before I enter. Because it seems to put you out exactly where you entered with this one. If I enter from over here, it puts me out there, but it's not going to... Rats. Um, okay, fine. Let's increase them all by about a meter and hope that that will be enough. Hopefully that will be about adequate. Yeah, it's going to be pretty unlikely that I'm going to enter this without getting inside that sensor bubble. So that should keep me relatively safe. So right now when we turn our vector thrust script on, everything goes haywire. If we turn off the jetpack setting, it also doesn't go crazy, but... I wonder if we turn this off whether it will all work normally. Nope. Still doesn't work normally. Okay. So, it would be a very bad idea for me to attempt to disconnect this from the base right now. With these rotors spinning this quickly, it is almost a 100% certainty that this will explode. It'd be spectacular potentially, but not exactly what we want. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this as it is, attempting to use the Ugly Duckling or something else on a construction like this that's already a bit clang prone is probably not in my best interests. So I'm just going to have to hope that this doesn't get badly damaged as it drops from this height. Here goes. And... Ugh. Stay clear. Oh. Did it? Did it? Um, hopefully I'll be able to... Oh, I did a fair bit of damage. Ouch. Nuts. Um, right. I really couldn't think of a better solution there. It was all going very, very, very weird. Oh well. Oh well, that was a bit wasteful, but I don't think I can do any different. Okay. There we go. Both fully repaired. Did the battery get damaged? A little bit. Okay. Let's hope we can get out of this little snafu. Whoa! Okay, the gyroscopes may be way overpowered. Let's turn one of those off. Okay. Definitely didn't need two gyros. There we go. Hovering. Excellent. Let's connect up to... Whoa. Uh, we are going to need to do this. There we go. No more drifting. Let's connect up to this piston connector here. So that we can recharge our batteries. Now there was a suggestion that one WSX-10 gave me when I was using the drone to stop the shake you get from small movements, you can actually slow down the speed of the rotors in the script. I think once I'm loaded up fully with other stuff, I'll actually want that speed. Whoa! Okay, it doesn't like being connected to the connectors either. Hmm. 
That's going to be an interesting challenge to deal with. I'm going to have to disconnect and turn it on straight away. Huh. Wonder why that keeps happening. I wonder what I've done to break the script. That seems more like a splitsy broke it sort of thing than a it was broken before sort of thing. Oops. So, on the script, where you can change the rotor speed, if we go to programmable block, we go to edit, you can see... where is it? Here we go. Max rotor RPM. If we dropped this, the rotors won't spin quite so quickly. Although the weird way that they were spinning then, I think, is well beyond 60 RPM. But it will... it would reduce that jerkiness a little bit. But I think we want it for now. I just wish I could figure out why I keep causing this thing to bug out. Let's grab our batteries. Check the status of the batteries. Stored power. Okay, that's alright. We can steal. Recharge. And. Now. While those are recharging, let's add some armor padding to this. Not for anything other than aesthetics, really. Now. I need to be really careful here. I do not want to grind off this block because it's what's holding on this uh, atmospheric thrust stuff right now. There is no connection between this rotor and this curved conveyor tube. So what I need to do is I need to create some other connections around here because that is not ideal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go there, 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 go down the side here down the side here, add another one here. So I'm going to try and create at least a couple of extra connections between those with armor. I want to go with chunky armor on this one, just for something a bit different to the other builds. Now that we've done that, we can grind off this and replace it with a slope. Then we go down, down, actually maybe we'll just go down one. That. Another one here. There we go. Then on the back of the cockpit, I think we will. Can't put anything in there, but I can in here. Alright. Oh, I probably could if I was disconnected from the base. I will fix that after. Oh, actually. Maybe I won't. Maybe I won't put anything in there because it'll cause trouble connecting to the base. Alright. So a fairly simple armor pattern on this one. Just using the standard cubes and slopes. And I'm actually going to do a slightly different color pattern on this. And the reason for that is a name that I was suggested. And that was Buttercup. This thing is going to be Buttercup. And that means it's going to be predominantly yellow. Unlike the other ones which are predominantly white. We will stick with that for now. So I'll weld these bits up. Then we'll get on with the painting. And hopefully by the time the painting is finished, it will be all charged up and ready for a test run. I'm excited to see how this welder performs. And then, if it performs reasonably well but is fairly costly on power, we will also build a welding rover so that we can save on power a little bit. All welded up. What I want is two. Add these colors properly to my color palette. Next one is the gray. Now, I should have just the three colors that I use. So, what we're going to do with this is go yellow. And we'll go color all of that grid. All of that grid. Yeah, that's all I wanted to do. Then, we're going to go the dark gray. Which seems to be wrong. Yeah, that's the correct dark grey. We'll go thruster, thruster, and thruster. 
then this down here. Actually, let's go the whole bit. Yeah. So we'll go this dark grey around it like so. And now you can see why I called this buttercup. Because buttercup flowers are actually really yellow. And I think with the dark grey offsetting the bright yellow, I think it actually works pretty well. I know there's going to be plenty of people who disagree with making this ship quite so bright. But I'm going to stick with it. Do I... Yeah, let's do this. Let's match it top and bottom. And there we go. The buttercup is born. I'm actually pretty happy with how that turned out. <laughs> yes, we had to do some uh, repair works to prevent disasters from clang, but that's a small price to pay. Now, we should create a group for our batteries. I've gone way too far. Butter cup batteries. C. Then groups. Butter cup batteries. Recharge on and off. So now let's fill this thing up with. Oh, actually. No. Control panel. Welder. You will be. Are you the correct one? No. Are you the correct one? Yes. You are going to be named Buttercup. Butterbup. Butter. Da. Butter, ah, Buttercup welder. There we go. Okay. And that should be all I need to do with that. Because now I can type Buttercup. Then I can fill this up with steel plates. You can see how many it can hold. We'll need some construction components, we'll need some girders, we'll need some interior plates. Let's just chuck even more in there. Don't think there's anything else I really need. Let's fix our production because we don't need those being made anymore. Let's grab some more steel plates. Let's see how this thing performs. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to take the batteries off recharge. And we are going to quickly unpark and then activate... Oh, actually, let's make this safe. Let's make this safe. Because we can use this piston to push us towards the floor so that we can just attach. And we won't have far to fall. How close are we now? A little bit further. <laughs> this is this is me being both sensible and ridiculous, I suspect. Because I probably shouldn't create a situation where I need to do this, but this is certainly one way of dealing with it. And that's probably gonna be close enough to be safe. Alright. Now if we disconnect, and actually what we'll disconnect and activate. Okay, that sort of worked. No! Ah, rats. I am going to add a connector control to my hopper. Oh, which connector is it? Maybe we'll just unpark. We're all right. Now we can add a connector to our hotbar because I couldn't see it before. Oh, actually, we want to turn on. Okay, why are we going backwards? Hmm. Are we still going backwards? Alright, good. We are rolling. 
let's turn on our welders and take advantage of the fact that the large grid welder still has a fairly decent range as you can see here I can actually weld more than one block at a time with a single welder and I don't have to get into crazy close proximity to what I'm welding which means my large thrusters aren't going to destroy everything as I go around so this is all working as intended yay the other cool thing about using the vector thrust for doing this is that I can actually turn this ship on its head without losing a substantial amount of thrust which is kind of cool we can turn all the way vertical except we don't quite fit in here those sparks are very disconcerting but I'm reasonably confident we're getting no damage because of the subgrids don't take damage from their parent grid thing This is better. And if you wanted to, you could expand this fairly easily as there is a conveyor port on the large grid welder and we could simply add another welder on the side of it to further increase our welding speed. The reason I haven't is I am concerned that my large thrusters might not quite be able to cope with doing that as I suspect I would then drop out of the sky and spend even more time repairing my thrusters which is not what we want to do ah uh, yes this is much much better this is what I was hoping for, I was hoping there was a bit of a vanilla solution to this problem I'm actually fairly happy with this welder half a charge gives us about 20 minutes of welding time which isn't too bad I think we can cope with that. Let's check if the welder turns off as I hop out. Yep. Nope. Apparently I didn't set up the sensor properly. There we go. Now it's off. <sighs> Much better. Alright. So with that with the buttercup done, let's name it too, which will be the buttercup atmospheric well, no that's not how you spell welding ship, let's call it atmospheric welder, keep it shorter, okay, let's go park again, in fact let's not park with the piston extended, let's retract it so that we don't cook the floor while going in for a landing what is going on go forward got a bit of a drift that happens with this Have those rotors reset the displacement or something no not liking me very much when I try and do this sort of manoeuvre. Come on, go forward! Why are you drifting backwards? Oh, wait, what? What are you doing? What are you doing, ship? Why won't you move forwards? Why don't you want to go forwards? You were behaving well before. Alright, should be... No! Every time I go up, I go backwards. Has it confused the orientation somehow? Oh man, this is this is frustrating. <laughs> side to side works fine, backwards works fine, forwards does not want to work. There we go. Ugh. Right. That was slightly frustrating, but we got there in the end. Alright. Leave that connected. Now. Since that is quite expensive power-wise, we might attempt a small grid welding rover. And to do that, 
I'm going to first grab some hydrogen for my jetpack. So we don't need this to be so crazy tall this time. What we do need to do though is be aware of how tall small grid welders are. So small grid welders, if we're going to weld the floor, we want this to perfectly touch the floor so that it can actually weld as we drive around, which means we need it at this sort of height. Now I'm going to go one block higher than that so that we have the room to place our wheels as we go. So what I'm going to do is place one like this, then I'm going to use one of these. Now this is going to be the challenging part with this build, is making sure that these conveyor junctions line up properly. We need large conveyors to go between the connector, which will be toward the back, and all of the welders. So we'll go three across like that, then what we're going to do, so that this thing isn't crazy top heavy, we're actually going to put a conveyor junction in that way, then I add another welder in here. Which we haven't done that one. Yeah, do that the same way. And now we add some cargo storage. So we'll go with a medium cargo container there, medium there. In fact, why don't we just leave it at that? Let's try and make this thing rather stumpy. Next, onto this one, we will add a connector. And onto the front, we will add our cockpit. Then, and this thing's going to be going to have this weird little hump over it where the two welders come down. What we're going to also do is we will need a battery which can go up here. We will need not much else. Just need some wheels now. So, the wheels. This is going to be the interesting part. I'd really like to use 3x3 three three wheels this time. And the reason for that is they will extend out just about as far as the welders if we use them set in just a little bit. What I need to find out first is how low they go. So that is not low enough. We need to go one block underneath the cockpit think to make sure that these line up properly because I want them to be at least able to lower the oops at least able to lower the welders onto the ground if we drop our suspension but to be able to lift up just high enough so is that going to be about right yeah I think that's right so we'll add one there and I think I did that back to front for the treads so, we'll start with our left, 3x3 three three left, one there, 3x3 three three right, one there. We hopefully won't need much in the way of suspension for this thing, because it's only going to be driving around in the garage. One of the downsides of this design is I'm not going to be able to easily build these projected blocks. So to do that, I'm going to have to go around and place them all manually so that I can drive. So fly around, placing each one like this, which is going to allow me a lot of power efficiency that I wouldn't get otherwise, but is not going to allow me much time efficiency compared to what I might have had if we use the buttercup. Now. I want the... probably want the suspension back here somewhere, I reckon. So, right. And three by three left. That will hopefully do it. That's all the basic blocks for this thing. So let's... grab that off and go with that just for something a little bit silly this thing looks ridiculous can't believe how ridiculous this thing is gonna look oh man oh well if it functions and if it saves me a whole heap of power 
that will be kind of handy. Alright, I'm going to weld this up and we'll jump back once that is done. Okay, we have our little crazy, terribly ugly... It's a contest between it and the Ugly Duckling, I reckon, these days. <laughs> the ugliest ship I've built in this series. And, there we go. Dropped safely to the ground. And, now, what we want. Oops, I apparently have not finished one of these suspensions. Rats! There we go. Now we've got everything done. Oi. Let's increase our strength to... Let's go 20. See if we can drive. No! No, 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 no. Oh, nuts. It appears we are perfectly resting on our welders. Uh, I didn't build them high enough. Dang it! That's not good. I wonder if this thing's too heavy for me to lift up with the Ugly Duckling. I suspect it is much too heavy. What we're going to do instead... Ah, so annoying. Piston time! Oh, this is, this is a bugger. I'm going to have to raise this up on some jacks so that I can drop the wheels one level lower. <sighs> what a... Pain. Where is a piston? Okay, piston there. Piston there. Two on the other side. Let's grind off these bits that I placed because they're in the way. Too low. One and two. Hopefully these are... Balanced enough that we can lift up on them properly. Let's grab all our pistons and let's reverse. There we go. What a jack. Okay, what we actually need is you to be a whole level lower. Three by three left. Well, you back up. So I'm going to drop them all by one block. All right. That will hopefully work this time. <laughs> Apparently, my assumption that the tips of the welders weren't actually solid was wrong. <sighs> all right. Let's pick these pistons up. And it would appear we can drive. Yeah. Excellent. Now, what we need to do is create a group for these welders. Which will be welders for now, because I haven't decided on the name of this thing. It's... It hasn't got any armor on it at the moment, so it's incredibly ugly, and I'm not sure what to call it. I suppose you could call it the toad. It is pretty, pretty ugly. So what I need to do now is connect this up with the base to get some plates and things on board to check out how well it goes welding things. And I think we will get rid of the nugget and we'll connect it up to this one. Let's move the nugget all the way outside. Ah! You're just causing me no end of problems, aren't you, little ship? Oops. We'll do the same as we did for the tick and build our little half slab resting zone for our welding rover. Let's see if that'll work. Hopefully, we don't tip over, because that would be my biggest worry with this thing. It is quite top heavy. Hmm. That could be a problem. Uh, huh. Hmm. I appear to be wedged. I have an idea of how to deal with this. 
Which is... Whack a gyroscope on it. Okay, now that we've got a gyroscope, we should be able to do that. Yeah. Right. Let's line ourselves up. Fuck. Alright, let's get some inventory on board. Why can't it connect to that one? What the? How did I manage to do that? I didn't finish welding the thing. Oh yeah, yay. What am I doing? Oh man. I bet some people saw me saw that I had missed this and were incredibly frustrated with me. Now we're connected. You dope splitzy. Let's unpark. We got two days worth of power apparently. We need much stronger suspension. Let's create a wheels group. Increase suspend. Increase strength. Decrease strength. Wrong button. Come on, use that gyro. Yeah, there we go. Definitely going to set up something with a piston or some such for this later. Let's see if at this height we can weld these blocks. Alright, turn our welders on and drive. Hmm, would appear we need to go a little bit lower. There we go. So this will work. I'm not... You know what? I want to hear from you guys which animal this thing looks like. We've got the ugly duckling, so what's this the ugly? It's going to be the ugly something because it is hideous and I'm not going to armor it. I'm not even going to try and make it pretty. I don't think I could if I wanted to. I, I just think it's, <laughs> it's just terrible. So I'm going to use this, I reckon I can use this to weld a fair bit of the floor in. But between it and the buttercup, we should have a fairly vanilla solution to most of our welding woes. Yeah, the buttercup is pretty enormous and it is sad that we can't use the other ship to work properly here. But the nugget just doesn't quite, quite work as well as I would like. And I really got to stop doing things like dropping it into the floor. Well, with testing these two welder designs, I have discovered one thing. The buttercup works, but is... Um, hmm, how do I say it? A little bit awkward for some reason that I can't quite figure out. The ugly whatever animal you guys come up with that I like the most ship that's here works pretty well. And power efficiency wise, like if I turn on these welders and we unpark... We've got... We're never going to need to charge this thing. I can't imagine me welding for 24 hours with this rig. So, it's going to be an incredible power saver, which is awesome. And I am very, very happy about that. And because it's an incredible power saver, I'm actually going to keep it. And I will use it for welding the floor in. Unfortunately, I can't use it to weld these bits that are projected but I can I think I can tolerate laying them out by hand it's not the worst thing in the world next time on survival I'm going to I think I'll weld out the next three sections of the hangar so that we've got a bit more room to play around with and so that we can plan out our ticks parking spot in there which could also be temporarily used as this welding rovers parking spot as well as they both have their connector at around the same height. And if I use a piston based one, I won't need to build these ramps and I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. So there's that and plenty more to come. And I'll see you then. Ugly, 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 ugly. Kinda pretty in a cute, chunky sort of way. Given I said that it would all end with clang if I disconnected the buttercup while it was having its rotors spin like crazy, I thought I'd test it out. And here's the result.